so far like it's just looking like sand why am i squeezing bread like a cloth right now come on man. <laughs> wow gordon ramsay would murder me it smells vile whoops all onions i'm not gonna be the kitchen princess i'm gonna be the kitchen fool no oh I also wanted to thank Fabulous so much for sponsoring today's video. Part of the reason I wanted to do this video is because I hate cooking. I just hate cooking, but it's something like you have to do to survive, unfortunately. And Fabulous is an app that is essentially like a digital coach or a trainer that uses insights from behavioral science to help you set goals, reach the goals, and change your habits. You can create a completely customizable routine, tips, tricks, things to keep you motivated, and they'll create a routine that is designed specifically for you because you fill out a questionnaire, which is really cool. You outline the goals you wanna do, you answer the questions they ask you about certain factors of like your personality, your schedule, your job, your day-to-day, -day, like how are you feeling? What do you want to improve upon? And then you get to create rituals like your morning, afternoon, evening rituals. You start small so you can build up to bigger things. Essentially, you can either use Fabulous to do habit tracking, in which you pick more than a hundred habits that they have recommended. You track them, they give you reminders if you need them. Or you can do a dedicated program, which is like a journey, which I decided to do because it's just so much more fun. It combines the habits in there as well and takes you on your own personal quest over a period of several weeks. So if there's something you guys are trying to get right, maybe it's just back on track with your sleep schedule, and maybe it's finally getting back in the kitchen although as we'll see i'm gonna need some more practice and help on that one um you can start building your ideal daily routine with fabulous if you want to check them out the first 100 people who click the link in the description will get 25 percent off your fabulous subscription thank you so much fabulous and let's see my not so fabulous cooking hey what's up welcome back to my channel you asked for cooking content so here is some um you may be wondering why i am dressed like this it's because today I'm going to be testing myself to see if I can indeed be the kitchen princess. So here's the situation. I don't really like cooking. Um, I'm, I kind of like baking when I'm in the mood, but I really do not like either really. And I don't think I'm really good at either of those. I really detest cooking and I really want this to change. So when I picked up this manga recently, this is Kitchen Princess by Natsumi Ando and Miyuki Kobayashi. I have been reading it and loving it so much. And I was like, you know what? I have to absolutely make recipes in this book because essentially the manga comes with recipes that you can follow along. And I was like, it would be so fun to make a video making the recipes in Kitchen Princess and reading it with you guys and seeing if I can indeed become the Kitchen Princess. The resemblance is uncanny. I'm about 20 seconds from taking these things out of my hair. They kind of hurt. Let me tell you a little bit about the plot. We're following Najika, who is an orphan, but she has a dream of becoming the world's best pastry chef. Basically, this whole manga, um, this is split into two volumes. I've already finished volume one. I'm in love with it. I'm just, I get so giddy reading it. It's just so fun, so happy, so delightful. But essentially, the recipe and the desserts and the dish that kind of the whole manga centers around is flan. Because after her parents died, she was really, really upset, obviously. And all of a sudden, this boy came along to her orphanage and he gave her his flan. And it was like the most amazing thing she ever had. And it was the best thing she ever ate. And she finally smiled again. She gets accepted to this very prestigious school. And her goal is to find like the boy who made her flan when she was younger and bake him the perfect dessert as a thank you for cheering her up and stuff. She's looking for her flan prince is basically what this whole manga is about um, alongside her other trials at the school. So anyway, of course, the first dish that we have to make is flan. I've never made flan. I've only had flan once in Honduras and it was great. So in front of us are all the ingredients. I think, oh, and syrup, one second. I don't have maple because it's really expensive. The recipe that I'm gonna be following is from uh, the site called The Minimalist Baker. I'll have all the recipes I'm using in this video linked down below, but essentially we're gonna try to make flan first. I don't know how hard or how easy flan is to make. I have no idea. I really have a vague idea of what flan even is. All I remember is that it tasted very good. I feel like this is a cooking contest where I'm the only contestant. A la cuisine. So the manga is telling me that flan's not hard to make. Um, everybody has trouble with crumbling. Why are we crumbling? I don't know, guys. But if you take your time and do it, it's really easy. I don't know if I trust her. She's just too happy all the time. And then in the manga as well, Najika uses teacups to put the flan in. Um, she says it's better to use something that doesn't conduct heat and it looks cute. And then you have to make a wish on the flan. Okay. My flan better look like that. If it doesn't look like that, I'm gonna be really upset. 
Total time, four hours. So I have two teacups that I want to use since she said in the manga that like it's cuter and better to use teacups. These are really small, but I just think they're so cute and it fits, it fits this perfectly. So we're gonna use two of those. And then apparently this makes like four flan, this recipe. So I'm gonna see what else I have to put flan in. I don't really have like the actual flan cups. Care, okay, so first off, we're gonna make the caramel and then we'll make the custard. Medium sauce pan. Okay, you're currently on my oven, which is probably not the safest, but the first ingredient, I had to buy a bunch of ingredients for these because um, I just didn't have them. So the first ingredient is coconut sugar. A third cup coconut sugar. Okay, this is the first problem when I cook or bake. I don't measure. I hate measuring. I think it's a waste of time. It smells vile. One third cup. This is where I would normally just pinch and throw, but because I'm cooking for you guys, I'm not gonna do that. I don't actually have proper teaspoon or tablespoon measurements as well, so that maybe adds to the problem, but we're just gonna use the spoon. Sure. <laughs> Next is vanilla extract. Half a table, half a teaspoon? Half a, what is it? Does that look like half? Heck yeah. I'm just supposed to turn this on heat. Let a timer for three minutes and stir constantly while cooking. The sugar will dissolve and the mixture should start to bubble vigorously. If it's smelling burnt, it's gonna smell burnt. I know that immediately. So far, like it's just looking like sand. Maybe I can tell you a bit more about the plot of Kitchen Princess. We goes to the school, but it's a school where everyone kind of has like a very special prestigious um, ability. Everyone, or at least most of the girls and all the other classmates there kind of pick on her because like her special thing is cooking and baking and no one really values that. And everyone's like, you need to leave, like you're a tarnish, a stain on our school. Um, every time I look away, it's different. I just really harass her to the point where she's like, I'm just gonna leave, like I'm not wanted here. But she makes two friends at the school who are two boys named Dora, no, oh my God, Daichi and Sora. Um, and they like help her and they encourage her to stay. And they're basically the only people there who treat her um, nicely. Okay, wait, we have bubbles. Shoot, what does this say? Okay, so far I'm not seeing too many bubbles. Wait, I'm confused. Quickly distribute the caramel between four prepared cups. It looks like caramel. It's looking really good. Mm. <laughs> I don't like the smell. Go get that sugar. It's a, you're supposed to bubble vigorously. Where are the bubbles? Come on, man. You know what? I think I might just pour it in. Because no bubbles are happening. One. That seems like nothing. Two. Okay, so then this is the custard. So this recipe like looks deceptively simple and quick because you just make the caramel and then you make the custard. Two tablespoons of cornstarch. I just have a compulsion to eat everything. So this is the cool ingredient that I had to buy, agar agar powder. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But essentially, um, this is like vegan gelatin, vegan gelling agent. It came in this like really kind of chemistry lab package that I'm a little unsure of. Does that look like a teaspoon? Yep. One third cup of maple syrup. Okay. One. Oh, that was kind of a lot. Two, three. I'm gonna say that is like pretty much lump free. So then we're gonna add the last ingredient, which is coconut milk. Oh, sh it calls for two cans and I only bought one can. Ounces, who uses ounces? Why would the Americans do me like this? We're just gonna keep forging ahead. Um, oh, wow. That looks yummy. Mmm, oh, oh, delightful. See, that's the thing with me and cooking. If I don't have enough of an ingredient or if I just have a totally other different ingredient, I'm like, that'll work, that'll work. Like, it's just, I have way too much faith in, in what? Like, it's obviously not gonna work. I only have one can of coconut milk. <gasps> oh, I have yogurt. That's not the same at all. What if I mixed oat milk? I think this is coconut yogurt, right? That's the base of this. I'm not gonna be the kitchen princess. I'm gonna be the kitchen fool.
So here's the flan. Um, and now they have to sit for five to 10 minutes. But I do kind of have high hopes for these three. It is three hours later, so it is now the moment of truth. These are my three best. I guess you can either eat it just out of the teacup or it's said to like flip it upside down on a plate so that you get obviously the caramel. So I think I'm gonna try and flip maybe this one. <gasps> oh, okay. Okay, so it kind of just fell out so I didn't get to do like a cool presentation but maybe I can like if I had fruit, I only have frozen fruit, I'd put some fruit on it and it would look very nice. Okay, mine kind of looks like the girl who doesn't know how to cook. It kind of looks like her flan. It looks better than her flan though. The shape is nice, but Najika's flan looks like this. I'm gonna get my boyfriend to taste this and tell me what he thinks. He'll be the judge. It looks kind of interesting. It looks good. I'm just gonna judge by your facial expressions because he's camera shy. Oh no. <gasps> It's just okay. You're also like the best chef, cook, food artist person I've ever met, so this is hard. It's a little bland. It's bland. It's, a bland. Okay. it's bland, needs a new dimension. It's not bad at all. I just don't like the sauce. I just like the, the body. The critique was that it's a little bland and needs, needs something. Um, I'm kind of into it though. But honestly, the next cooking challenges just get harder and harder, so. Okay, so he gave it a three out of five. I think I'm also gonna give it a three out of five. I just really don't like the caramel sauce for some reason. I think it's the coconut sugar. I really don't like coconut sugar. All right, so the cooking saga continues today. It is now a couple of weeks later and we have, we have a live studio audience today. He's gonna sit there and judge <laughs> or just fall asleep. I started filming this video before I got my new camera. So we're just gonna continue on with the iPhone and this will be the last iPhone video. But what are we making today? And we're gonna be making Terra Masolata. This manga introduced me to this dish. I actually never heard of this before, but it is a Greek dish and I think it's like a fish dip. One of the ingredients is roe, I think, right? Which is fish eggs. I've never had fish eggs. I've never had the desire to make vegan fish eggs, but uh, that's what we're gonna be doing today. I have no idea uh, how this is gonna turn out. If all goes well, this might be the last dish I make, um, but I guess we're gonna be making vegan fish eggs today. So please join me on this very strange journey. This just felt incredibly wrong. But anyway, this has been sitting for about 45 minutes now. So the first step is to take out the bread. Uh, I didn't have stale bread. I thought I had stale bread, but instead the stale bread started growing mold, which was just rude. So then I had to use tortillas. So here we are. Um, and now they're incredibly not the texture they're supposed to be. So apparently we're gonna take the water out um, and then squeeze the tortilla to remove the water and then place it back into the bowl. So that is step one. That's delicious. Why am I squeezing bread like a cloth right now? <laughs> Ew. Mm, raining bread like a cloth. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is work on the row um, because that's gonna take a little longer and that's the step I need to do right now. So I'm following like two separate recipes. One is just a non-vegan termosalata recipe and then for the fish row, I'm just, that's the only thing that's animal. So we're just gonna attempt to make fish eggs without fish eggs. So um, very bizarre. We again have the famous agar powder and then I also had to buy dulce. Is it called, oops. Is it called dulce or dulce? Um, it is a type of dried seaweed. Maybe we should try eating one. Look at the amount of iodide in this. Is anyone else seeing that? Here it is. Looks like a little sea dragon. That's incredibly salty. I also had to order caper berries. Um, we're not actually gonna be using the caper berries. For my whole life, I've thought capers were kind of fish. The recipe just called for the brine from the, the bottle. So that's what we're gonna be using. Um, but yeah, I swear, I thought capers were fish. I never knew they were caper berries. 
Um, I think it's because in like an episode of Scooby-Doo, they're talking about capers. And one of the last ingredients for this one is just nori. So the first step is to bring, uh, is this on? No. Water to a boil. And then we're gonna add the nori, the dulce. I also keep saying vegan roe and the terra masalata recipe does call for roe. Um, but the vegan recipe I found is actually caviar. I don't really know the difference. Um, so we're just gonna go. wondering if I should try a caper berry. This is what it looks like. Hmm, kind of tastes like an olive. Okay, it's actually not bad. Okay, so now we have our strained liquid um, that was just boiled. So now I think we pour the liquid back into the pot and then it goes for another round with the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so I'm gonna add the one tablespoon of caperberry brine. At this point, I'm getting really confused as to how this is gonna all work because it's currently on the stove. It is kind of thickening, thickening up, but then I'm supposed to use an eyedropper, which I don't have, to drop the caviar or my mixture into cold olive oil, which I did chill in the fridge. Um, and then that makes the little balls. I'm just very confused as to how this is actually gonna work because it's not it's not inspiring me with a lot of confidence right now. There is no way this is actually working for me right now because I just dropped in one to test it and I see little balls in the oil. This is like the cool this is the coolest thing ever. Oh my I don't have a dropper, so I'm just trying to make like little okay. See that was a little bit. I guess it doesn't really matter what they look like because they're gonna go into a food processor. Oh man, this is cool science. I feel like Bill Nye the science guy. Science rules. This is gonna be the moment of truth. <gasps> oh, that's, oh no. Wait, is it working? I should just give up. Okay, so this is all we have and they do look kind of cool. So this is the part where I just carry on and pretend like everything went completely fine. Uh, definitely pretend that I have more than nine individual fish eggs. <laughs> well, I can see how that would have worked for someone who was a bit more learned. Uh, that was really cool though. That was a cool experiment because these guys do look like fish eggs, but the other ones were too, too nebulous. They didn't strain at all. Oh no, it's in my eyes. <sighs> Things are going from bad to worse. Oh my god. Wow, Gordon Ramsay would murder me. I smell like onions. Everything smells like onions. Whose video idea was this? It was mine. Calcifer things aren't going well. Okay, lemon juice. And the fish eggs. You like some dip with your onions? Like this is just onions. Whoops, all onions. Greek viewers, I just want to apologize from the bottom of my heart. I'm so sorry. Okay, so here's what mine looks like right now, and here's a photo of what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. You know what? Let's see what the kitchen princess herself has to say about it. Oh, that's what happened. She uses crystal sea salt from England. I don't know. It's not. Oh, it could be good. It could be good. I'm done. I cut myself off. Oh, I don't even know what that tastes like. It tastes like, it tastes like stomach bile. I'm not gonna lie. I gotta get someone else to taste this. Oh, Yon has a little bit more than that. I'm so sorry. 
just know that I don't mean anything by this. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. Are you okay? Mostly just olive oil. Oh, and now you're getting no, it. It, it takes a long time to kick in. It's like lemony puke. Yeah. Yeah, lemon puke. Okay, so thanks for coming to Emma's cooking disasters. I may or may not actually catch you the next time because I don't know if I ever want to do this again. Thank you so much for watching. I think I have failed. What did I get on that one out of five? Zero. Zero. This has been what it has been. So until the next time, ciao.